In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to manually create vectors for a fluted and spiral layout. And we'll also discuss how to wrap clip art around a column. So this is what we're going to be aiming for. But to start on our own project, let's go up to File and Close. OK, so let's set up our new file. So let's click on Create a New File. And we're going to make sure our job setup is set to rotary with a job size of 18 inches in length and a 2.5 inch diameter. Of course, our units are also set to inches. Our Z zero position will be on the cylinder axis, and that's because we want to make sure that our cut is accurate, and we don't know if the material is even all the way around, so we'll use our cylinder axis in this scenario. Our XY dating position is set to the bottom left-hand corner, and our orientation is set to along the X axis, which means we are wrapping the Y axis around our job here. We don't need to flip the design, so let's turn that off and we'll set our modeling resolution to very high and finally our material settings are canadian maple for the appearance so with that let's hit ok now in this job we're going to refer to fluting and spirals on a wrap job and if you have vcarve pro or aspire you actually have some gadgets that are available to you that can help you with this and these are built in to the software but in this demonstration we're actually going to show you how to do all of that by hand step by step so the first thing we're going to do is divide up our column into sections. So to help set up our sections, we can actually use the guidelines. Now, if you come to the top here on your ruler and you left click it, you can actually drag down a guideline from the top here. So you've got a horizontal uh, guideline. You can actually just right click and delete that if you don't need that. Similarly, if you go over to the left hand side and you click on this ruler, you can just drag that out as well. So you've got a vertical guideline as well. And this is going to come in very handy for me do our design. So with that in mind, let's just delete that and look at the next part of our tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is look at now setting up our sheet ready to uh, create our column. So we're going to first drag out a vertical guideline and I'm going to stop at around 0.5. So when you can see next to my cursor, you've got the 0.5 there. I can just let go. And as you can see, we've got the other increments there as well, but I can let go at 0.5. There we are. And now if I right click that, you'll notice I've got these guide properties, which allows me to play around with a bunch of different settings for my guide. But I want to actually create a new guideline relative to this one. So if I select this option here, when I now create a new guideline, it'll be relative to this one. So it'll be an offset that you can define down here from this guideline that we've just dragged in. And I do want to select my new one because after I create this new guideline, I'll be creating another one after that. So I want to make sure that that one is selected because if this original one is still selected, then the offset will be from this original one, which is not what I want in my next one. So first, let's offset from this one at a distance of 0.5. And let's create that new guideline. And there we are. You can see we've got our new guideline there that's been created with an offset of 0.5 inches from this one. But now crucially, this new one is now selected because we chose this option here uh, to select new guide and then we want to offset this one by five inches i'm going to create a new guide and now this one will be selected so if i just move that so you can see that a bit clearer and then again i'm going to go by 0.5 and create a new one from that then we will go a further two inches from our last one and then we will go one inch and then from there we're going to go up to seven inches and then for our last one just need to go under one inch and there we are so we went 0 0.5 a further 0 0.5 five inches 0 0.5 again two inches one inch seven inches and then finally another one inch guide at the end there. Okay, so with that, we can now close out this form. And now you can see that our guides have now divided up our job space into some sections for us. So the distance between this corner in the bottom left here and the top left here is actually our circumference around the surface of our cylinder. Uh, so that's good to know. And we're going to need that information in just a little bit. This left line here and the right line at the very end here actually represent uh, tabs. And this will be to make sure to hold our cylinder in place so it won't fall off our CNC machine. So it'll make it easier for us to actually cut it when we come to uh, finally cut this project out. 
this guideline here and this guideline here will actually be used to create coves. And then with this guideline here and this guideline here, we're actually going to position a 3D model in here. And then finally with this guideline and this guideline, we're actually going to create a spiral piece of design between this. So you'll see a spiral going along this section just here. So with that, we've now got a couple of extra layers set up as well for our job seat. So let's have a look at some of those layers in a bit more detail. So if we pop up to our layers tab here, you'll notice we've got three different layers. We've got the zero plane, our layer one, both of which we need. But every time you create a rotary job, you actually get a bounding box, but we don't need that. So we can go ahead and right click on it and delete this, delete this, there we are. And then we want to delete all of the data on that layer as well. So let's just click OK. Now I'm going to come back up to our layers tab because I actually want to rename layer one because I want to rename this to tabs because I'll actually be putting uh, our tabs on this layer later. So when we come to profile cut uh, on the end here, when we do our tabs, we'll leave some tabs behind, uh, which will allow us to machine our cylinder safely when we come to finally cut it. Now, if you ever did want to turn your guidelines off for any reason, let's say they're getting in the way of you designing something, for example, you can just come up to the top corner here between the two rulers and just click on this button and it'll get them off your screen and if you click them back on again they'll be back on your screen as well but for now i'm actually going to use our guidelines to help me create our vectors for our tab so if we come over to our draw polyline tool and i'm just going to hover my mouse pointer over the top here and click here come all the way down to the bottom of that line click here and then with that i'm going to hit space on the keyboard and that allow me to now freely move my mouse pointer and I'll do the same on the other side. So click at the top, come to the bottom, click just here, and again, space on the keyboard, and that can allow me to freely move my mouse point, uh, pointer. But with that, I'm happy with that, so I can close that out, and let's just show you our vectors for our tabs. And there they are, I can see them quite clearly now if I turn the guidelines off. But let's just turn them back on for the moment. So now it's looking at creating our vectors for our codes, but before we do that, I wanna put them on their own layer to keep everything organized. So let's add a new layer. And I'll call this one coves, enter. And I want to make sure this one's selected. You can see it's in bold text right now. I want to make sure that's the layer I'm currently on. So with that, making sure that that's the layer I'm currently on, I'm going to start creating our vectors for our code. So again, come over to our polyline tool. I'm going to click at the top here, all the way down to the bottom here, space on your keyboard. And again, at the top here, click on that line snap to this line on the bottom, click again, space, and there we are, there's our two vectors for our codes. We can close that down and just to give you a clearer view. There we are, there's our vectors for our tabs and our codes. Okay, so now that's, that's all set up, we can now have a look at creating our flutes and we're actually gonna put them in between in between here, there are two vectors for our flute, so we're gonna put it just here. Now, if you use VCarve Pro or Aspire, you've actually got gadgets to help you create a flute. You've actually got the fluting layout here. But I'm going to show you how to create it manually. So again, we're going to pop over to our polyline tool. I'm just going to click on that. And this time, I'm just going to click on the top left-hand corner here. I'm just going to drag this out till it's about four inches. There we are. You'll notice there's an L next to my mouse point, and that indicates the length, which is four inches. So I'm just going to click on that. And there we are. There's our line. I can just close out our form. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to put this line in the center of these two vectors. So what will happen is, because the distance between this one and this one is five inches, I'll have half an inch on each end of the line when I come to center it in a moment. Okay, so now I actually wanna take this line and I wanna make a couple of copies of it against this line here, because I wanna evenly space out the lines with 1.5 inches between to make our flutes. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select this vector first. You can see it's highlighted. I'm gonna hold shift click on this vector here. And let me just turn off my guidelines for a second so I can see the line a bit clearly, there we go. And I'm gonna come over to our copy along vectors tool. I'm just gonna click on that. And I wanna copy along the object and I wanna have a d distance of 1.5 inches and I want it to force even spacing. So it's gonna try and force the 1.5 inches spacing between each of the lines and make sure I get that space between each one of my flutes. I don't want to align my objects to a curve, but I do want to create copies on a new layer. So let's go ahead and click copy. And let's just close that out. And now you'll see 
that what it's done is it's placed the line centrally. If I just move my uh, bar across to the left so you can see a bit more clearly, it's taken this line and it's placed it centrally on this vector, which is one that we use to kind of guide with and with a distance of 1.5 inches uh, in between. And if you wanted to measure that, you can actually come over to the measure tool just here, click on that, and you can hover over this point, click it. You can hover over the next point here, click it. And if you look over here, it's 1.57 inches in distance, which is just a very slightly over 1.5 inches, but we forced it to uh, have that even space in between each one. So it's just good to know that you can always measure that if you ever wanted to uh, double check that at all. Let's just close that out. And now we can have a look at the next part of our column. So now that we have our flutes ready, you'll notice that this is now along the circumference of our job. Now the problem here is that we've actually got one more line than we actually need, which is this bottom one just here. Because if you notice, this line will end up meeting this line at the top because this will wrap around. And what that means is when we come to machine it, this will be fluted as well as this line here and we'll end up doubling up on that. We don't want that. Uh, it'll certainly save us some machining time as well. So let's just select this vector and delete. And then what we can do is as well is use our original vector. If you recall, we use this one here to uh, make our flutes here. We don't actually need that anymore. That was just used to make our flutes. So we can delete that one as well. And you'll notice it's created a new layer for me as we did in the form. But just to keep everything organized, let's rename that to flutes. And hit enter. And there we go. So we've got these on our flutes layer now. And I actually want to group these up together. So the way you can do that is if you take your mouse pointer, click and hold down the left click on your mouse and just drag out this selection box over your flutes and just select all of them together. There we are. And we can now right click on one of them. And we're just going to group these objects together. So now we're going to have a look at actually putting these lines centrally between these two vectors here. And the way we can do that is actually by using this line again. So with our grouped flutes selected, we can just hold shift, click on this line here. And we're going to come over to this tool just here called Align Selected Objects. Now the first thing we're going to do is click this one here to go up and down. So that'll put them evenly from top to bottom. And then we're going to use this option here for the inside edge. We're actually going to stick the end of this line here on the edge of this line just here. So if you click on that, you'll notice now that these are all lined up with that edge cleanly. And that looks great. So let's just close that out. Now, as I said, I want these lines to be central. So what I'm going to do is just click on our grouped flutes again. But this time I'm going to come over to this tool here called Move Selected, Selected Objects. And I'm going to move them in a relative position of X of 0.5 inches. So make sure that relative is selected. And here you want to put in 0.5 inches, hit apply. And there we are, that's moved over by 0.5 inches. We can close that down. And now these are our flutes all set up ready to machine or to uh, put some tool pass on later on. Okay, so with that all set up, let's turn our guidelines back on because now we're going to have a look at importing a 3D component between these guidelines here. So we're going to have it wrap around and that'll look quite nice. But to do that, we're going to first zoom out to our limits of our worksheet by clicking this button just here, which is zoom active view to drawing limits. You can also hit F on the keyboard. And we're going to go over to our modeling tab and we're going to import our component. So this button just here on the top left, import a component or 3D model. And if you navigate over to your tutorial folder for this tutorial, if you install that, you'll have this file just here called shell molding. So let's just double click on that. Now you'll notice you get this warning, but also in the bottom left hand corner, this is your actual component. So what the software is saying here is that this, because this is the first component we've added to uh, our worksheet here, the modeling plane of the job will need to be adjusted to avoid distortion. And so typically we would say yes here so we can avoid that distortion. So let's just go ahead and click yes. Now before we move any further, it'd be good to now organize this onto its own layer. So let's come up to our layers tab, click on add new layer. I'm going to call this one components, hit enter. And what we're going to do is select our model, right click it, and we're going to move it to so if I just 
bring this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to pop it just here. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to put move to layer components and I'll, I'll now move that to the components layer. And you can see that if I turn this off, it will disappear and if I turn it back on, there we are, we've got our component ready to go there. Now I actually need to size this back up. So let's go over to our drawing tab to do so because we need that to be the correct size for the uh, circumference of our uh, job here. So we want to make sure that's selected and we're going to go over to this item just here, so, uh, set selected object size. Now what we're actually going to do here is keep this in the center, but here in our width, I want this to be the circumference of our job. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to type Y here and with our uh, X and Y link checked, this will actually adjust the height for us as well with that check. So I'm just going to hit equals next to the Y and there we are. And then I can hit apply and you've noticed I've got the auto scale uh, Z also uh, selected. If I hit apply, there we are, that's now scaled it up to the correct width for our circumference. So when this comes to wrap around, this will be meeting end to end nicely. So let's just close that out and now we can have a better look at our component. Okay, so we now need to rotate our component. So you can do that by actually hitting nine on the keyboard with your component selected. So if I just click on the component, now we just hit nine and nine again, so I've hit nine, the number nine on our keyboard twice, and that's rotated that around for me. So I'm just gonna have a look at now, trying to place this between these guidelines as best as I can. And there we are, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna drag it down just a little bit. And there we are, that looks like a nice fit there. So let's actually have a look at what it looks like in our 3D view. So let's just press F on our keyboard to zoom out. And I'm just going to click on the horizontal tiling. So here we go. We can have a look at our 3D version of this 2D view we've got here. I'm just going to spin this around because what I'm looking for is a seam because there may be like a slight seam. Oh, there we are. You can see it just here where the top and the bottom of the model meet. Now, if I just rotate that around, you'll see a bit more clearly. You can see we've got that seam just there. We don't really want that. So to adjust that, we can have a look at adjusting the height of our model just a little bit so we can get rid of this seam. So let's just have that selected. And let's come back over to our set selected object size. I'm just going to increase the height just a little bit to 7.9. Hit apply. And there we are. It looks like our seam is gone, but let's just make sure. Let's just spin this around. You can drag your mouse pointer or you can use these great buttons here to spin this by 30 degrees at a time. And it looks like to me there's no more of that seam on our 3D model and that looks pretty great to me. It looks nice and smooth around our edge there which will lead to a nice finish. With that let's just come back up to our full view for our 2D uh, model. Let's hit F on our keyboard, close down this form. And with organization in mind, let's now put this shell molding model into the correct tree. So we're actually going to right click and we're going to add a new level. So if we just right click on level here, insert a new level, and we're going to rename this level just here. We're actually going to call this wrapped component. So let's just rename level and wrapped components. There we are, and now we can drag this into that level. And there we are, nice and organized. And we can now move on to the next part of our tutorial. So for the next section, we're gonna create uh, this piece right here between these two uh, guidelines just here, which will actually be our spiral. We're gonna use some 3D clip art all the way around our column two times. We're gonna wrap it around twice. So they'll have a nice little wrap around our column that'll meet up and that'll look really nice. now. As I mentioned earlier, if you have VCarve Pro or Aspire, then as I mentioned before, you have this gadget up here that you can use for our spiral layout. But I'm actually gonna show you how to do it manually. We're gonna create all the vectors that we need uh, manually. So uh, let's just go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. I'm gonna to come to the right hand side here a little bit as well. And I think that's pretty great. because I'm gonna be um, creating some quite large lines here for our spiral. So I'm just gonna zoom out just a little bit. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a line that is 
twice as long as the circumference we have currently. So to do that, we're going to go back into our drawing tab and we're going to use our draw line or polyline tool. I'm just going to drop one point down here, at the very bottom here. And now what we're going to do, we're actually going to use the form and we want an angle of 90 degrees. And for the length, we're actually going to do y times 2 and then equals. And then what that will give us is a line that's twice the circumference of y, which is this length here to here. And that is what we need currently. So we'll just go ahead and click add. And that should add in that line now. And so what you'll see is that you've got this line here. If I just close that out and if I just turn off our guidelines, you've got this line just here now that uh, represents uh, twice the circumference of our Y. So that's great. And now we need to do another line to set up our spirals. And that's the line we're actually going to put our 3D content onto. So again, we're going to choose our draw line tool. And this time we're going to come uh, down here. We'll turn our guidelines back on first. So I'll come down here, click on this point just here, zoom out. Then we're going to come up to this point just here, snap onto that. And there we are. We have our line ready to put our 3D components on. And we can just go ahead and close that out for the moment. Okay, so let's have a look at now importing that clip art so we can actually put it onto our lines that we've uh, put in here. So let's go over to our clip art tab. And if you notice, you'll get some free clip art with your software. And if you go into decorative under the clip art library folders, and we just scroll down until you find this one here called Flourish 220A. I'm just going to click on that and drag that into our worksheet. Uh, I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard to zoom back into the middle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this by holding, hovering over the center of the clip art. I'm just going to click on that and drag it down to it snaps onto the center line at the bottom left hand corner here. If I just zoom out a bit and scroll down a little bit, then I'll zoom back in. You'll notice that our center line of our clip art is now also on the bottom left hand corner here as well. Now you may be wondering why I did that. It's because this bottom left hand corner is at zero, zero. If you just follow my mouse pointer now, and if you look at this bottom section here, you've noticed you've got your X values and your Y values. And if I hover that mouse pointer over the middle, you'll notice I get X zero, Y zero. This is a great place to measure from. So because what I want to do is I want to make six copies of this flourish. And I want them to be side by side, so they'll wrap around our column. And I want them to have a minimal gap between them. But to achieve that minimal gap, I need to know what the distance is between this one and the next one uh, so that I can achieve that. I want it to kind of, I want the next one to kind of either tuck under this one or kind of just about meet it so there's no big gap in between them. So what I can do now is if I keep an eye on this bottom right hand corner here where you've got your X and Y values, I'm going to keep an, uh, an eye on the X value. I'm just going to click on my uh, clip art here and oh, let's just control Z that to make sure it's back in the center. Just going to click on that while holding the alt key down. And you'll notice when I drag it out, there's a copy of it. And if I just keep dragging it right, you'll notice that X value change. I'm just going to keep going to the, to the point that I need it to be, which is roughly about 4.6. That's where I want it to be roughly. Uh, so that's the X value there is 4.6. Let's just say roughly 4.6 if I round that up. So that's where I want it to be roughly. So I need to jot that number down. So 4.6 for X. So let's let go of that. I'm going to hit controls in the keyboard. I'm going to come over to our drawing tab again. But this time I'm going to use a tool to help me copy these. And it's going to be a tool around the bottom just here under offset and layout. Now, if you notice, there's a tool here called array copy. Let's just click on that and let's have a look at this form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an offset value here for this clip art. I'm going to move it in Y by 4.6, if you recall. And that was the value that I had when I dragged it across while holding Alt. So I'm just going to keep the um, X value as 4.6. I want one row of these. I want six copies of them. And I also want to make sure that I group the copies together as well when I copy them. So let's just hit copy and see what happens. And there we go. If I just close out this form and if I zoom out just a little bit, you'll notice now that I've got my six 
uh, clip art of my flourishes right next to each other and I can use that now to wrap around my column and that will look really nice when we come to do that. Okay, so let's look at now adjusting this so we can get it ready to start wrapping it around. So first thing we want to do is select it and we want to rotate it. So we hit nine on the keyboard twice to make it uh, vertical. I'm just going to drag it off to the side for the moment. Now what we need to do is actually figure out the length of this line here and the angle of it. So I want to pop over to uh, drawing tab again and you'll notice there's a great tool called dimensioning. So if I pop over to here, you can uh, click this tool for dimensions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the length. So make sure length is selected. Click on the bottom left-hand corner here, snap to the top right-hand corner here, drag that out and just click on there. And then we've got a length of 17.1971. Okay, that's great. And I need to know the angle. So for that, I'm just gonna click in the bottom left hand corner here on the start of our line click just here and once more over here we can drag that out and i'll get my angle for this as well and I'll just put the dialog box just there and that's 24 degrees and that's great now we can now use those values to help us position our clip art so let's just close that out and i just want to point out that this now has its own layer if you come up to the layers tab at the top you've got this new dimension uh, layer here as well and you can turn that off and on but we're going to keep it on for now but we can always turn this off later when we're further into our designs but it's just important to know you've got this new layer now that you can use to your advantage as well okay so now we can actually look at adjusting our uh, size for our clip art so if i just select it now now i would know these values i can pop over to the set selected object size i want to keep my x and y linked and my auto scale Z on. I'm going to change the, the height to 17.1971 as we've got up here with our dimensions. I'm just going to hit apply. So that should now change that to the same height as this line. And I want to change the angle of it as well so we can meet the angle of this line too. So let's just select that and move it up into view a little bit. And with that still selected, I want to come over to this object here, which is rotate selected objects. And we're going to rotate this relative to its current position by minus 24 degrees from the center sorry there we are and hit apply and now that should be the same angle and length of this line here so what we can do is hover over the center point here click on that and roughly hover over what we think is a center point here you'll notice it snapped to it and there we are we can let go and now if I pop up to my 3D view by tiling my views, you'll notice we now have this uh, wrapping around our column. So if I just keep clicking this button here, alternatively, you can drag your mouse pointer by clicking and holding. You'll notice it wraps around our column. Now you may have noticed actually that it's not wrapping around twice as we anticipate. It's actually just wrapping around once. It's stopping here, you've got this hard edge here. Now, if I just unwrap that, you'll see what's happening is it's only taking into account the clip art that's currently on the worksheet and anything that's off of the worksheet hasn't been wrapped around again. And that's actually because we need to adjust our component properties. And I'll show you how to do that just in just a moment. So if I just turn the wrapping back on again, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my modeling tab and I'm gonna put our flourish into its own level. So let's just right click insert a new level I'm going to call this one spiral component so right click that again rename that and we'll just call that spiral components hit enter I'm just going to grab this flourish and pop it into that section just there and now what we can do now is if we right click on this level we can change the mode to wrapping so if I just click on that You'll notice now in the 3D view, it has now reflected this and it's wrapped it all the way around our column like we wanted it to do. So it's just something important to note that if you actually turn off the wrapping, so if I if I go back into the, the uh, flat view, you'll see that it's wrapped it around for us, which looks great. But if I turn off that wrapping, 
It only shows what is on the, the worksheet currently, and that's not what we want. So it's just important to know that when you come to uh, do anything like this, where you want something to wrap around again, that you need to set this component tree to have wrapping uh, on, and that'll wrap around, and that'll look great when we come to uh, finally cut this out. So let's just pop our wraps view back on, and there we are, that looks really great. So if I just spin that around again, you'll see as it loads in, there we are, we have nice detail there on our, on our cotton. Okay, so with that, I'm just gonna zoom back into our 2D view, hit F on the keyboard, and now we can look at moving on to the next part of our tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at adding another piece of clip art into, us, into our design, and we're actually gonna use a raised ring component that's gonna go just along this line here. It's gonna go around the circumference of our job and give us a nice raised ring finish. That'll also go over the top of this relief here and have it end a nice smooth point for us. So to do that, let's go over to our clip art tab and we're gonna choose this option just here for 3D tabs. And we're gonna choose this middle one just here, this circular tab here. So let's drag that onto the job sheet. I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna hover my mouse point over the center of that tab. I'm just gonna drag it until I snap this line. There we are, so it's now placed on the line centrally. And while it's selected, hit nine on the keyboard twice so we can rotate it vertically. And I'm just gonna drag that down to the bottom now of our worksheet because now I will drag this from the top handle here to allow it to meet the top of our worksheet so it'll wrap all the way around. So let's take that all the way up. Fantastic, and there we are. Now if we look in the 3D view, you'll notice we've now got this ring around our uh, rotary job. And that looks pretty great, and you can also see that it covers the end of our relief here. which gives it a nice kind of smooth ending to that relief. Now, let's say if you bring in this clip art tab and it was just a bit higher than the rest of your components here, what you could actually do is if you go into the modeling tab, if you right click on your component, go to properties, you can change the shape height just here, for example. So if you look at your shell molding here, it's 0.25 inches high. So you can always use that as a bit of a base height so you can base this ring off of that so you can get a good idea of what you're gonna do with it. So I'm actually gonna change this to 0.15. Hit space on the keyboard to apply that change. I think it looks quite nice at that height actually. So I'm just gonna close that off. But I do want to address the width of our uh, ring here. So I'm just going to look at it and select it. And I'm just going to come back over to our drawing tab. Let's just maximize this view for the moment. And let's just come down. You can also hit F on the keyboard to zoom into the worksheet if you need to. But I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to choose a set selected object size. now. This time, I'm gonna make sure that the link X and Y is not checked. Same for the auto scale Z, because I just want to change the width, nothing else. So I'm gonna change this to 0.75, space on the keyboard, hit apply, and you can see that's got a little bit thicker. If I go to the 3D view now, there we are, we've got a nice thick ring going around there, and that looks pretty nice. And you can see it's nice and smooth as it goes around. Now, if you did have the issue again where you had the seam, you can actually address that. But before we do, we need to make sure that the component is in the right level. If you notice, when I actually brought this into the software, the component was placed under the spiral components, but I need it to be on its own level. So with that, I'm just gonna right click, click on insert new level, and I'm gonna call this one wrapped component two, enter. I'm just gonna drag my circular component into that now. And there we are. Now you'll notice we've got that seam there and we didn't have that because this, this level is set to wrapped, but this is not. But I'm gonna do what we did for the shell earlier. And I'm actually gonna raise the height of this just a little bit so that we can get rid of that seam now. So again, if we pop over to our drawing tab, and we're just going to make sure that our circular component is selected. So if we just zoom in a little bit, click on that. You can zoom back out again if you need to. And we're going to choose the set selected object size again. 
Again, we're going to only change the height, so we don't need to link the X and Y or scale the, the Z value here. But I'm going to change this from 7.8 to 7.9. Hit space on the keyboard. Hit apply. And there we are. You can see that seam is now gone because we've raised it to 7.9. So I quite like that. That looks quite nice. I'm just going to check by turning this around a little bit. And yeah, that looks pretty great to me. So with that, we can close out this form. And now we can have a look at addressing this problem here now, which is that the relief is now currently riding up onto our ring. So let's pop over to our modeling tab and we're just gonna right click on our level here. We're gonna set the combine mode to merge. And there we are, that's fixed that problem. You, you see now that our designs are merged together and we no, no longer have the relief riding up onto our circular component there. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to just maximize my 2D view. I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard to zoom in a little bit. I want to make a copy of this for this line over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it selected, hover my mouse pointer over the middle of it, and I'm just going to hold Control and Alt on the keyboard, click on my uh, circular component, drag it across until it snaps. There we are, snaps that line there. Let go. Now let's have a look at our 3D view to see if that change has taken effect. And there we are, that looks lovely. We've got our circular ring now around the bottom of our column as well. I'm just gonna make sure that the um, relief isn't riding on top of it. There we are, it's merged together with it. And as you can see, it's also under that same component tree as well. Okay, so let's just go back to our horizontal view. And now we can have a look at um, getting rid of our dimensions, we can turn that off now because we don't no longer need that. And now we can have a look at potentially toolpathing uh, some of our design here. Okay, so with that, so let's pop over to our toolpath menu by clicking this button in the top left here. And the first thing we're going to do, as usual, is to check our material setup because we want to make sure that the settings here are the same as our physical CNC machine. So our diameter is 2.5 five inches. The XY datum position is in the bottom left hand corner. The Z0 is at the center of our cylinder. We want no gaps for this so we want to make sure that our model position is all the way at the top here. But we need to remember this number here which is 0.2547 because we're going to be cutting away a lot of material so we need to keep this number in mind later because we're going to do our 3D roughing and finishing tool pass first. Then we're going to do our flutes, our spirals and our tabs. So we need to make sure we realize what this number actually is and make a note of it for later on when we come to machine the other parts of our job. In terms of clearance for Z1 and our plunge Z2, I've set these appropriate for my machine, but please take into account any hold downs or clamps you may have. And please set this number to something that is appropriate for your machine. And I'm happy with the Z gap above material, so I'm just going to click OK. Now at this stage, I'm actually just going to save our progress before we move any further. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As, and I'm just going to call this one Create a Column.crv, click Save, overwrite the one that I already had because this is the latest version, and there we are, just to make sure that we've got our progress saved. I'm just going to look back on that at the Z level. Okay, so we're going to have a look at our roughing toolpath now. So if we go to our 3D roughing toolpath here, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill, which for my machine, these settings are correct, but please do make sure that the settings are correct for your machine and click select. We're actually going to use a model boundary in this case, and we don't want to use a boundary offset, but I do want a machining allowance of 0.03. This way it will leave behind some material for our finishing path to get rid of, but also won't uh, allow for any chipping during our 3D roughing pass. In terms of roughing strategy, we're going to go for a Z-level strategy with the profile set to last, order, level by level. Don't need a raster angle on this one. Um, we don't need any ramp plunge moves, but I will rename the toolpath so it has an indication of the tool that we use, which is 0.25 EM, with EM standing for end mill. And let's just hit calculate. And there we are. That is exactly what I expected it to do for a roughing pass. I'm just going to look down at it again, and I'm going to preview this toolpath. Now you'll notice there that it unwrapped it. So it actually did this as a flat relief and then wrapped it back around again. But this is exactly what I expected to see. 
uh, and I'll be cleaning this up with my finishing pass in just a moment. Okay, so let's close down our preview here and we're going to go up to 3D finishing toolpath, but this time we're going to use uh, an eighth inch born nose. Now these settings are appropriate for my machine, but again, please do make sure they're appropriate for your machine. And we're going to use our model boundary. Boundary offset, I don't need on this case, but I am going to use a raster strategy. It's going to go up and down our column. I'm not going to add an angle to it, but I will change the name to indicate the tool. So point 0.125 BEM for our ball nose M mil. And we're going to hit calculate. You'll notice that it may take a little bit longer to calculate this one because it's doing a lot more of a dense area with a smaller tool. So it can take a little bit of a while to calculate. But while it's doing that, I'll also mention that now is a good time to make sure that your preview is correct because if there's any mistakes or any issues in your preview, then more than likely then you'll have the same issue on your machine too. So now is always a great time to make sure that your preview looks uh, like you expect it to. So when you come to machine it, you won't get any uh, errors or any uh, anything erroneous that you weren't expecting. Okay, so with that, Calculation just finished. I'm just going to go ahead and preview that toolpath. And again, you'll see that it unwrapped it and then did the did the uh, toolpath for the flat relief and then wrapped it around again. Okay, that looks pretty great. So the next thing we'll do is look at our fluting toolpath. So with that, I'm just going to make sure our flutes are selected. You can click any one of them because if you remember, we grouped them together earlier. So they're all selected together. We can click close. And we're going to come up to our fluting toolpath, which is just here. Now, for the start depth, if you recall, we had to take a note of a number earlier uh, in our material set, which is 0.2547. And that's because our 3D passes have actually removed the material from the surface of our cylinder here. So we need to put in that value here, which is 0.2547. Because if we didn't put that start depth there, what would happen is the tool would go down and just start cutting where the material used to be before our 3D uh, passes were run. So we need to make sure we take that into account. So we put 0.257 there. We're going to go to a flute depth, sorry, yeah, it's flute depth of 1.125. And in this case, I'm going to select a new tool and I'm going to use the half inch ball nose this time. Just going to select that. And I want to ramp at the start and the end of uh, my column here. So I'm just going to put the ramp length of 0.5. And I want it to be a smooth uh, ramp type. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit calculate. You may notice that I actually didn't rename that uh, toolpath correctly. So I'm just going to right click it now. And I'm just going to rename it to include the tool, which is our 0.5 ball nose M mil. Just to make sure I know what tool's being used in that one before I run the preview. And let's preview that selected toolpath. And that looks that looks beautiful. Look at that. We've got a nice looking few, uh, flutes going around our column there, which looks great. I'm just going to look back down on that. And now we can have a look at now toolpathing our codes. So to do that, we need to make sure that our codes are actually selected. So it's this line. If I just zoom in for you, just so you can see a bit clearer, this line just here, if I turn off my guidelines for the moment, and then this line just here, if I hold shift and click this one too, those are our cove lines. So now that we've got this selected, we can go over, close our preview, and we're going to choose the profile toolpath. Now, again, we want our depth to be 0.2547 because of course we machined that material away earlier with our 3D tool pass. So we make sure we need to include that depth. Uh, and then we're gonna change our cut depth to uh, 0.1 inches. I'm gonna change my tool to a half inch ball nose. And I'm gonna machine on these lines. I'm not gonna add a separate last pass or any tabs to this one or any ramps or anything like that, but I will name this tool path and we'll call it profile coves and we'll also add in the tool. So 0.5 ball nose M mil. Wonderful. And then we'll just click calculate. And there we are. You can see our coves uh, toolpath have been added in. Let's have a look at the preview for that. I think that looks beautiful. That looks really, really nice. I think our columns coming together quite nicely now. And that looks really, really nice. So let's just look back down on that. 
Okay, so now we can take a look at our final toolpath, which is going to be our tab. So if we just select them, click on this line here, hold shift, click on the very end line here, and then we can go to our profile toolpath. Now, this time I actually wanted to go down um, to a cut depth of 0.5, but I'll address that in a moment. I'm just going to first put in our start depth value, which is 2547, if you recall, because we've already removed some material. Now, as I just mentioned, I wanted to go down 0.5 of an inch if that material hadn't been removed, but it has been removed. So I need to take that away from what I actually want to achieve. So I want to go down by 0.5 inches, but I need to take away the material that's also already been taken away to get the value that I need here. So it's minus 0.2547 equals, and then I get a value of 0.2453, and that's going to be my cut depth with that 0.5 taken into account. So let's just click on select so we can choose our tool. And we're gonna choose our half inch end mill. We're gonna machine on these vectors. We don't need a separate last pass. We're not gonna add tabs because these are our tabs. And we don't need any ramps on this one either, but I will rename this to our profile tabs with our 0.5 inch end mill on there as well and let's just hit calculate and we can run that preview and there we are there is our finished column and i think that looks rather beautiful that's really really nicely come together and as you can see we went through uh, a lot of crucial design elements uh, in a, in order to make sure that a lot of the issues that we saw were addressed such as the um, seam that you were getting here and some of the overlapping that you may get from your relief onto other parts of your column now, this stage you could save off your toolpath, and to do that, I'll refer you to the introduction to Raptor Rotary Text Guide because that has a section on saving uh, rotary toolpaths off. Uh, but for now, let's save our file. So if we go into File and Save As, this time I'm actually going to call this file a column because it is our completed column and it's going to be a CRV file. So I can just click Save and I've got that ready for future use if I ever need it. But that concludes the tutorial and I hope you found this very useful and I hope that when it comes to making your own version of our column that you find this tutorial very useful and as usual we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much.